two nations in this century they were made on the proclamation of their doctrines number one the state of Israel Theodore Herz he postulated proposed the theory of going back to Palestine their holy land gifted in the book of Genesis to them inverted commas which is not a topic you can refer to one of my videos where I discussed that this whole land belongs to who? The children of Ishmael or children of Isaac? You can see there in that video. But now, so anyhow, they are persuaded. They, they brought this Rothschild family into it. Balfour Dec Declaration the second, they got this independent land whatsoever. So they got this Palestine back. But what was their uh, cornerstone? What was their founding or rock foundation? It was that we will follow the system of Torah we will follow whatever is applicable from it and this is the gifted or promised land of course it was a religious connotation and they got it and Tel Aviv they make their central power slowly slowly annexation happened and you know what is happening now all of the thing has been occupied so far so good 1948 Balfour Declaration Israel became the independent state one year before 1947 there was another land Pakistan and I'm proud to be of that we cannot live with Hindus we need a separate land Elam Akbal two nation theory Hindus are different people and of course we can see now we can see that if Qaeda Azam which we call Muhammad Ali Jinnah the founder of Pakistan had it not been for him to make a u-turn on Shimla conference there wouldn't be Pakistan existing you know that why because Nehru Pandit Nehru at the time of this conference he said that let us get a freedom from British people British Ra, Raj and then after that you know we will discuss something and then after that 10 years later you can get a separation from us but let us be unified in this matter and later on somehow Muhammad Ali Jinnah came to know the statement of Pandit Nehru he said that once we get this independence from British Raj then we will see who will get separated in future we will see later and for this evil intention of his Muhammad Ali Jinnah made a U-turn he said if this is your intention sir sorry to say we will not accept the Shimla conference and the conference was ended imagine that if this conference was succeeded India is not ready to give you one chunk of Kashmir imagine they were giving you whole of the chunk as a separate nation Pakistan you see in reality these are not the way we will see these are not like this this is not like this the way we see it so foresighted this this another uh, which you can see far Muhammad al knew it and Elam Iqbal all this postulated proposed and Alhamdulillah we got independence from British Radcliffe played a vital role in his hypocrisy by dividing uh, this East and West Pakistan and in the middle they put the big danger this whole weapon of atomic bomb in the middle India played a great role with raw agencies and made all these seeds of uh, dissenting seeds of separation and we got separated fine that's another topic once we get separated what was our main notion our cornerstone what was it Pakistan ka matlab kya la ilaha illallah the meaning of Pakistan's identity is that there is no God except Allah and Prophet Muhammad is the last and the final messenger and prophet of Allah this was our cornerstone our slogan our emblem this was our main slogan and what did we do after that objective resolution was passed 1930 and that was what Ali Khan, objective resolution the constitution of Pakistan 
Nothing must be done to the repugnant of the Holy Quran and Sunnah. Anything which you dislike in Islam cannot be accepted in Pakistan. This was what we supposed to do. What happened after that? Allah says in Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 75, Allah says, when these people come to me and say and made a covenant that oh Allah give us re this respite give us this opportunity to make a land of Tawheed for you and remove us our miseries remove our miseries and ordealments from these evil mongers these tyrants who are ruling us of course those British and India those days Give us a free land, O oh Allah. We will do everything according to Quran and Sunnah. We will not deceive you. We will not flim flam you. We will not hoodwink you. We will do whatever we supposed to do. That supreme sovereignty belongs to Allah alone. You know, I still remember when I was in grade 11 or 12 or 9 or 10, like these ages, we have Pak study, studies in our curriculum of schools. Pakistan studies compulsory even in universities even when you are in a having Islamabad board of education you see in that Pak studies in every year the first question was the most important question sovereignty the sovereignty belongs to Allah and the topic was the, the sovereignty of Pakistan the first chapter every student cannot pass the Pak studies exam without clinching the deal of this first question. And what was the first statement I remembered very vividly. The sovereignty belongs to Allah alone. This was written in that question's answer. So it's very clear our base is then our passport. Alhamdulillah, it says the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. I'm proud of it. Then on the first page, on the, sorry, the second page after your identification, it says that we are not allowed to enter the state of Israel. Alhamdulillah. Can you believe it? One Israel nation came and Pakistan came, a strong opposition. And they wrote it, Pakistan wrote it that Israel, we are not supposed to enter there and neither they are welcome in our country alhamdulillah I say salute to the people who made this law into the passports I salute them so we promised Allah Allah we will do this Allah gave us free land do you have any idea how much suffering those Indians are having in India those Muslims India you have no idea they are so much terrified petrified the corrupt Muslim over there the rulers over there under their umbrella everything is okay but a true practicing Muslim he has been suffering in that country especially with this RSS ideology of that this guy the one I don't want to take his name I don't like to take his name he is promoting the one who got rid of Gandhi their own leader himself so those people are ideologies which is just like Nazi party. And now they are doing this to the Muslims. Ask them that, how are you doing? Ask them, what are you feeling? Every day they are petrified. They are terrified of uncertainties, unprecedented situations. Anything can come in the morning and take us. Imagine we have a free land. Allah gave us free land. Please understand this. Value the country. Please, for God's sake, value the country, our country. We have everything in our land. We have, we can make that land into tourism. We can make that land utilize into halal things, so many things. We have potential. We have power. Our inner core is Quran. We have ulamas, we have clerics, we have knowledge, we have power, we have science. Our students are brilliant in the world. Our people are brilliant in the world. We have brilliant minds. Our intelligentsia is the top of the world, one of the top, a top of the world. Our intelligentsia is one of the brilliant intelligentsia we have. If you compare to the rest of the world, please think about this land. Imagine why 
are we suffering from duplicity of these ideologies why are we suffering because we are under the punishment of Allah why once we promised after that what did we do in the second verse Allah says and then in chapter 9 verse 75 Allah says you come to me and then you ask for the land we put Tawheed and everything once I give you in verse 76 Allah says then you turn your faces you break the promise or you broke the promise Allah says then in return I punish them with nifaq this word comes from nafaqa in the old days kings and premiers they used to have a scape area and that scape area should be like I suppose like tunnels when one uh, uh, gate is closed they have two faces of tunnels so they go to another place this is what you call nifaq meaning two one area two places to go out two faces a person with two faces or animal with two faces a snake with two faces or a chamber with two exits nifaq allah says then i strict you or struck you with nifaq hypocrisy this is the ayah i am quoting not my words and Allah says then khauf and all those declining in surah tauba this exactly what happened to us we are under the disease of intellectual hypocrisy cognitive dissonance intellectual paralysis ambivalence dichotomy confusion in haze and these all things we are having a flume a clouds of all these things covering us overshadowing us and we are looking here and there for justice for peace for money for help because we indulge ourselves into punishment of nifaq we should make a collective repenting repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask the forgiveness he is rahim or rahman wala taqnatu min rahmatillah do not get despondent from the mercy of allah we should do something now we should ask forgiveness oh allah forgive us we lied to you whosoever is responsible in the state craft we all should do a repenting 